Yo guys, what's up? So, uh, lately the old bike has been having uh, a bit of an issue. The battery has not been charging, and I know this because after about five rides or so, the, uh, the starter starts to get weak, and I can just tell the battery is dying, and the bike's not charging the battery, so obviously there's a bit of an issue. So anyways, today I'm going to show you guys how to diagnose and repair a charging issue with basically any motorcycle, but you know, I'm going to do, be doing it on my 1981 Honda CB750. Uh, this is a common issue with like a lot of older bikes, like cafe racers, and uh, that's kind of what my channel is based around, is cafe racers. So um, a lot of you guys watching are probably uh, in the process of or planning on building a cafe racer. So this is going to be a helpful video for you guys. Okay, so the only tool you really need to diagnose it is, uh, well, you need to get your seat off, access the battery, and then you just need a multimeter. I have this nice Craftsman one. I got it for Christmas. It's very nice. Uh, and then, so I'm going to show you guys how to test the battery now. So let's do it. Okay, so I've already done this, but the next step would be to take your seat off. Uh, or whatever you have to do on to get to your battery. It's different on most bikes, but for me just take the seat off Some bikes you also have to take off the side cover. I went ahead and did that too. So You just want to get all the electronics and the battery exposed and then you get your multimeter and you set it to DC 20 volts um, And the first thing you want to do Get the negative uh, side of the multimeter put it on the negative side of the battery and then put your positive side on the positive side of the battery Who would have guessed right and then uh, you want to first check? What kind of voltage your battery is getting without the bike on? So I just charged the battery last night. I'm getting 12.43. I started the bike earlier today So usually if you just charged it you want to see it around 12.5 12.6 something like that and then you want to turn on the key, make sure everything's still connected. I'm having some issues with that, but uh, yeah. So, oh shit. So once you have the negative to the negative and the positive to positive, you want to start up the bike. And you should be seeing the number go up. It should be going to like high 12.9, to uh, 13.5 anywhere in that range is good as long as it goes up basically so let's go ahead and start it up give it a little rev maybe yep. so as you can see just there um, the number did not go up so my battery is not charging so something's obviously wrong with the system and uh, also a little thing to note, if the number goes like super high, like into the high 15 or near 15, then your uh, regulator is probably bad and it's sending too much power to the battery, which will eventually fry your battery. So that's definitely a thing to look out for. I'm having the opposite problem on my bike. So the next thing you do is just to diagnose and look at the individual components of the charging system. So let's get to it, eh? Uh, the first thing to check is the uh, the rotor, and I'm gonna show you guys how to check it. It's under this um, this case on the right side of the engine with this weird little bump on it. So first thing you wanna do, take out these uh, three bolts and then just remove the case. This is a dry case, meaning there's no oil in it. So you don't have to worry about oil coming out when you take it off. The bolts are 8 millimeter, so you want to get an 8 millimeter socket and be gentle with them. Try not to shear anything off because that, that uh, automatically creates a bad day. Whoops. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to test this with your multimeter. So let's go ahead and get to it. And once we've got this case off, you want to get your multimeter and set it to 200 ohms right there. And then you want to put one each prong on each of these uh, slip rings is what they call. This is where they contact the brushes. 
in here you can, i'll show you guys later but um so it should read 4.2 to 5 anywhere in that range is good good resistance so go ahead and put one on one slip ring and one on the other let's see i'm getting 2.7 so yeah this is probably bad yep that's the issue my rotor is bad there's a short somewhere in inside i don't know how it happened uh so i'm assuming this is the only thing that's bad but i'm still going to show you guys how to test the other components now we know that my uh my rotor is bad unfortunately i don't have another one so i'm going to have to order one online uh but in the meantime i'm going to show you guys how to test the stator and the brushes and I do have an extra set of each of those here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to test it right now. First, I'm gonna show you how to test the stator and then the brushes. So you wanna go ahead and get your multimeter and set it to 200 ohms again. And then you wanna check for continu continuity between these uh, three wires. So you got the plug here and then you wanna look see the top only has two i'm pretty sure those are for the brushes and then the bottom there's three so you want to test those so just put one in in one of the inputs and then get the other one and put it in the other ones uh, so you can see the multimeter down there that one has continuity that's good and so does that one so this is a good stator next you want to check for continuity between the wires and the case and this time you should not have any numbers come up or any continuity because that means there's a short somewhere in the system so go ahead put it there and that one's good check the next wire that one's also good and they're all good so this is a good stator guys um so now i'm going to move on the brushes here um you want to check for the wear there's a line down there and uh if it's worn all the way down to the line then it's bad but if it's sticking up like this like these ones are then it's fine so you want to put one uh, lead on the screw head and then the other one on the actual brush there's no continuity there check this one and there's no continuity there um a little double check okay these brushes are probably bad I mean, they're definitely bad. I just checked them. So uh, this one, the stator is good and the brushes are bad. So now that you guys have seen what testing a bad brush set looks like, I'm going to show you what testing a good brush set looks like, hopefully. Um, so you want to put the positive lead on this one and then screw head there just like the last. Maybe you'll try. We'll try this one instead. There we go. We're getting something there. That one's good. And mm, try this one. It can be a little tricky, but there you go. So these brushes are good. And I tested the stator and this stator is good. So I just need to buy a new rotor and then I'm set. The mail finally came. Here's the new rotor. I know what you guys are thinking. What the heck? You bought a freaking rusty old rotor. But the guy said it worked and I tested it and it does work. So, I mean, no one's gonna see it anyway. As long as it works, it's fine. But, uh, so I'm gonna have to take this one out and to take the old rotor out, you have to get a, a flywheel puller. I bought this one on eBay for like $8. Um, I really did wanna try to find a different way to do it without buying this part, but I don't think there is a, a really any other way. So I'm going to show you guys, maybe, I've never done this, but I'm going to show you guys how to bump out this rotor. And I've heard it can be uh, pretty difficult, so I'm going to do my best. Let's get right to it then. There it is. Okay, to get the bolt out, you want to get a mallet, a flat, a long flathead screwdriver, and a 17 millimeter wrench. So, if you can tell by how short a breath I am, this is not a very easy step so make sure the wrench is on good and the screwdriver is in good so it doesn't slip go ahead and give her a whack
probably not the best idea to use a ratcheting wrench, but it's the only 17 millimeter I had, so. Okay, let's try it again. It is tight on there. Okay. Ah. Uh. And you want to make sure that you're turning it left too. That's pretty important. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Oh. I think I may have gotten it. Yep, I got it. There we go. That was tight. So, once you get it, you'll instantly feel some gratification. And it's going to feel pretty nice. So go ahead and take that bolt the rest of the way out. And then uh, it gets slightly easier, but not much. So you want to get your flywheel puller that you bought online and thread it in and just keep going until it gets tight. This is a, uh, the flywheel puller, you're going to need a three quarter inch um, wrench to get it in and tighten it the rest of the way and of course uh, you're going to have a little trouble with this part as well so you want to dig that in you might need the mallet this time around as well so I'll put it in that orientation give her a whack should be coming loose anytime now Please, and thank you. <sighs> These can be very tricky, keep in mind. Okay, I think I got it. Yep. So, then you can just simply pull it off. There you go. And... And then you just put the new one on, just like that. Put the bolt in, 17 millimeters. Just do it by, with your fingers, it's much easier, trust me. Make sure it's good and tight. Use the same method as before with the screwdriver. Try not to uh, touch the windings at all because you could damage them. I didn't care as much before because that was uh, the bad one, but this one's good, so you want to be careful. And then, as, as tight as you can get it, that's pretty good. And then you're done. So put the case back on and then test it out. Once you have everything replaced that was uh, causing you issues, you want to pop the seat off and you want to start it up and test the battery again. Make sure it's fixed. As you guys saw, um, it was not reading very well. Uh, that's because um, you got. You want to make sure that the leads are very well connected to the battery terminals because if not, it'll give you false readings and then you might think that something's wrong when it's really not. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start it up again and see how, how it reads this time. Okay, looks good. And the voltage is even higher now, so I know that the battery charged at least a little bit. Good to go. Bam, so the bike's fixed, guys. Uh, the battery's charging now, and now there's nothing wrong with the bike, and it feels damn good. So uh, this is the end of the video. Hopefully I taught you guys something helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave me a like, a comment, and maybe subscribe. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.